So one of the approaches we're exploring in this unit is organic agriculture. I've come back to Growing with Grace in Northwest England to find out more about how an organic growing system works. So Cara, you're the head grower here at Growing with Grace. Can you just explain for people that may not know the ins and outs of it, what organic agriculture involves and how it's different from conventional farming? Yeah, okay. Um, I think of, the way I think about organic farming is that it's old fashioned farming. So it is conventional farming, it's mm -hmm. traditional farming. And the, what we call conventional farming is kind of farming plus chemicals or chemical fertilizers. Um, so. What organic means is the not using um, chemical fertilisers and chemical pesticides. And that's important not just in terms of whether or not there are health risks, but more importantly for me, it's important for the way the whole ecosystem works. And the foundations of organics are about caring for the soil first and thinking about the soil as the root of everything that we grow. Mm -hmm. um, and we apply that at Growing With Grace, but also in... Um, in a very hands-on and small-scale way, so we're very, very local and very low carbon and mm -hmm. um, very hands-on. Mm -hmm. So, yay, lovely schlots. Obviously, I don't need to tell you guys this, there's a right way and a wrong way, rooty ends tend to go down, shooty ends tend to go up. <laughs> Sustainability is a, it's, it's a bit of a, a woolly word, but organic has very strong definitions to it. And it's a word that you know, we have to be inspected for and everything else. So there, there, there's, it's, a, it's a definite thing, if you like, as mm -hmm. opposed to sustainability, which is used in all sorts of wrong yes. ways. The basis of it is the sustainability of growing. Mm -hmm. the, the main thing is that we don't use many inputs. Um, we, we, our only input recently has been, um, with, with a few small exceptions, has been compost that we make ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the fertility, when you measure compost, the, the fertility is not in the compost, but it's a living material. It's full of bacteria and fungi that, that work for you and, mm -hmm. and mine minerals for, for the plants. And, and a healthy soil requires that life to be at its peak. And um, we, we believe that uh, the addition of chemicals and fertilisers do nothing for that. Sure. So it's obviously based on then building up and supporting the soil and the natural fertility, feeding the soil rather than feeding the plant. In yeah, and, and it's supporting the life within the soil rather than the soil itself as a chemical, uh, you know, a mineral, mineral balance. Yes. It's, it's the life that's the important bit, not, not the... Not, not the structure as All much. The microorganisms. Yeah, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. Sure. Um, you can stab the mulch with a trowel. In, in in the popular press, you hear the two sort of common criticisms you hear about organic is one is people say, oh, it's more expensive, and therefore that makes it a middle class thing. And another thing, some people say perhaps it's less productive than conventional agriculture per unit area. What would mm. you say to people who who kind of make those sort of make those criticisms? Gosh, they're, they're both really important questions. In terms of, is it more expensive? I think sometimes it is. Um, it's quite difficult to tell. Sometimes I think people go into perhaps a small shop like ours or another organic or whole food shop and they, for some reason, people sometimes compare the more expensive items. Mm -hmm. There'll be some luxury conserves and you know pestos in that shop and they'll see the price on that and they'll be alarmed. But if you bought a leek in season, mm -hmm. unpackaged from us straight off the farm, it would definitely be cheaper than a leek out of season, but organic in Tesco packaged. So you can do well mm. buying organic if you think about it, if you're clever about what you buy. Organic agriculture does require more labour. So that has to be covered by the cost of the produce, which um, that that could be seen as a good thing, though. Mm -hmm. the, the labour's being used more than machinery, if you yes, like. Yes. Um, but the the other side is that there's a lot of hidden costs in conventional agriculture, which aren't actually 
a cost to the farming process, they're mm -hmm. a cost to society as a whole. Mm -hmm. And yep. the productivity is, the, the yields could be as high as a, a, any other system if, you know, if, if, if there was as much focus going into organic, uh, you know, as much money going into the research in organic as, in, uh, as there is in other systems. But um, the, 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 the productivity levels are usually linked to the, the size of the operation. And we, uh, organic farming is a small, by its nature, needs to be smaller. You can't really, uh, there are organic farms that are massive, mm -hmm. but um, it doesn't really fit properly with the system. So obviously with organic cultivation, you don't have recourse to the same kind of chemical fertilisers and pesticides. So can you tell us a bit about how you go about managing soil fertility and also pest control in this kind of system? Fertility, you've got a range of options. Um, the way we do it at Growing With Grace is we add um, compost made from green waste mm -hmm. to the soil. And we also make, like hand make, liquid fertilizers mm -hmm. from um, like nettles and comfrey oh, yeah. and we add those even either at propagation or um, we're going to experiment with adding it through the irrigation system mm -hmm. or you can we do actually mulch as well we also green manure um, so green manuring is where we grow a crop specifically because it um, my it adds nitrogen or mines potassium mm -hmm. or adds organic matter to the soil. Mm -hmm. Sure. And how about with pest control? How can you uh, mm -hmm. stop things from eating your crops that yeah. you would rather not be there? Okay. <laughs> the ideal would be to work towards a balanced ecosystem that was favourable for our agriculture. So we're interfering with the ecosystem by mm -hmm. trying to grow just the things that we want and not the things that everything else wants. Mm -hmm. And we want them to flourish at the expense of weeds, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things we do is we encourage natural predators to come in and live out as full a life cycle as possible in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So whether that's newts that eat slugs, we've got a pond and it's got little newts living around it, mm -hmm. or whether that's... Um, parasitic wasps that eat aphids, mm -hmm. we try and make sure that they come in and that they stay in and they've got habitat in here. We, we've um, encouraged virtually all wildlife, although sometimes we get problems with that, <laughs> but the, um, the ponds massively increase the sort of ecological balance of a place. So we, 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 we've got one very small pond and a slightly bigger one and one in the making. <laughs> which is uh, unusual in greenhouses, I think. We do have recourse to organic approved pesticides where mm. the board of kind of soil scientists have made a decision that they're acceptable. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, if things get really bad and we think we're going to lose an entire crop, mm -hmm. then we're allowed to use permitted pesticides, yeah. Sure, so you have that as a backup. Yeah. We, we have used the odd... Um, uh, Pest control uses a, another bug to 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 eat the pest bug, but um, the, the that's very rare. Our, our main course of action is don't put the thing in the same place too often. Mm -hmm. So we have a rotation, a four course rotation, and uh, trying to create the best healthy plant you can, because a, a healthy plant is resistant to most problems anyway. Well we're also, well we're standing in a forest garden which is a bit of a, a different mm. kind of style of cultivation mm. and growing. Can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yes, so, um, the forest garden um, idea came from us having a part of a greenhouse that wasn't fully utilised and um, we, we wanted to demonstrate sustainability in all its forms and the idea of a forest garden is to have the layers that one finds in woodlands so you've got a canopy layer and then a, then a scrub layer and then a, a ground layer. And um, for, for our canopy layer, we've got various fruit trees, anything from cherries through to uh, apricots and quinces. And then um, for, for our shrub layer, we've got herbs and rhubarb and things like that. And then um, on, on the ground itself, we've got some wild strawberries and things like that so it, it's just Fantastic. trying to trying to build up the layers and we, we just have to do a bit of weeding in here 
that, and, and mulching. Mm -hmm. And that's all the attention it's it needs. Maintenance. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. So what more do you feel could be done that would help support small scale organic growers like yourselves? I suppose the uh, exposure of how much support real, uh, other forms of agriculture require. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you know, to level the playing field a bit between organics and... and, and I mean, it, not only as... Um, you know, there's a lot of subsidies around. We we we, we ha have to, for the privilege of being organic, we have quite a quite a fee to pay, mm. and we have thoroughly inspected, sure. and that seems to be back to front. 